Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today's video because I have some more dupes to share with you. I know I just did a dupes video last Sunday, but I'm back with some more and I know you guys love dupes as much as I do, so I figured you wouldn't mind too much. Um, so well, let's just go ahead and get right into it. I do have a brand new primer from Milk Makeup that just launched at Sephora very recently. This is called Pore Eclipse. I actually have the mini version because I wanted to try it first before I committed to buying the full size. And this is kind of an interesting primer. It's silicone free. It's a pore smoothing mattifying primer that is supposed to be also hydrating and have sort of a cooling sensation as it goes on your skin. I've really, really been enjoying this one a lot, but as soon as I tried it out, it reminded me of another primer that is also silicone free and has that same sort of cooling sensation and pore smoothing properties. And that's the Impossible Primer from Wet n Wild. I just got this one not too long ago. I want to say a few months ago and this basically does the exact same thing both of these primers feel like a silicone base they really have that sort of bouncy squishy texture that silicone primers have it doesn't feel like a lotion they feel a little bit on the thicker side and then when you put them on your skin they just sort of smooth everything out and make your pores look a little bit more airbrushed and it wasn't only the texture and the way these blur pores that made me think that they were dupes but also just the fact that both are silicone silicone free and also that they both have that cooling feeling when you put them on. They literally feel identical as you're applying them. So I was super excited in one way to find a dupe for this new primer, but then in the other way, I was kind of like, I just wasted my money on this because I feel like the Wet n Wild one is so, so close to it. I know the ingredients aren't exactly the same. I know the Milk one has niacinamide, I think. It has Bakuchiol. It has some skincare ingredients. And I don't think the Wet n Wild one really does. I mean, on the back, it says it has glycerin and like some flower extracts in it. But as always, when you're dealing with the high-end products, usually the cost is driven up by some better ingredients, but if you're just looking for a primer that's going to smooth out your skin and you don't really care that this has skincare benefits in it, I mean, at the end of the day, it is makeup. So if you're using skincare already, it doesn't really matter, at least to me, if my makeup has more skincare in it. So I would rather save my money and just get something that works exactly the same way. I also have another dupe for the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow Blush. I know I have mentioned this one in several dupes videos now. I keep finding more and more dupes for this product. So I wanted to share, and actually you guys are the ones that helped me to find this dupe. I never would have even known about it. And that is the CoverGirl Cheekers in the shade pink candy. So I looked everywhere for this color. Once you guys started telling me about this in the comments of my last dupes video, I was on the hunt for this. I went to CVS, I went to Walgreens, I went to Target. I could not find this specific color. I feel like a lot of the drugstores seem to be phasing these cheekers out for whatever reason. So I ended up just getting it on Amazon and it came in a day. So I was finally able to test it out. And you guys, it is really, really close. I think this is probably the most affordable dupe that I've shown so far other than the Essence Mosaic blush, but this one is even closer than that. So I definitely think this is a better dupe even than the Essence one was. It's pretty much the identical color when you see it swatched out. It looks the same on the skin. It has the same matte finish to it. There's no shimmer, no sparkle. And let me just show you guys me putting these on my cheeks. So here's the Dior blush going on and it's like that beautiful, cool toned, candy pink color. Absolutely beautiful. It's like a Barbie pink. And then here is the CoverGirl one and it, it goes on exactly the same. I really cannot tell the difference once they're on my cheeks at all. And also the CoverGirl blush has no scent to it. I know these used to have that Noxzema fragrance. It doesn't anymore. This one is completely unscented. So if you didn't like that scent, then you don't have to worry about that with these newer ones. But yeah, I think this is an awesome dupe for the Dior. I feel like it's the best one yet as far as the color goes. And also the formula of this blush is really nice. They're pigmented enough, but they're not overly pigmented. I feel like just like the Dior, you can kind of build it up to whatever you want or leave it sheer. So I think it is a really, really good dupe. And also because a bunch of you had suggested this blush as well, I had to try it out. This is from Sephora Collection. It's called Over the Moon. And in that same video, a few of you had asked me if this was a dupe because you had seen it online. So I just wanted to show it really quickly. It's not as close as the CoverGirl. I think 
think the Sephora collection one is a little bit more on the purple side versus pink. So it's close. I think if you blend it out on your cheeks, it would probably be a similar type of look. But to me, it's not as exact as the CoverGirl and it's also more expensive than the CoverGirl one too. This one I think was $11. So personally, I would just stick with the CoverGirl blush if you're looking for a dupe for the Dior. Next up, I was at Ulta a couple weeks ago and I finally decided to try the Anastasia Brow Freeze. I know so many people talk about this and I just wasn't sure this was a product I was going to use very often because you have to get a spoolie. They actually sell a spoolie that goes with it, but I didn't wanna pay like $17 for a spoolie. So I just used one that I had laying around, but I'm sure you can also just get packs of spoolies on Amazon or like at the drugstore or something. But I have been having the worst time with my brows because they grow downward. So the hairs are always going down and I do use brow gels to kind of comb them back up, but nothing ever holds them into place for very long. It stays for maybe like an hour and then I notice my brows look all wonky again, like a little while later. And I had heard that this brow freeze really keeps them like standing straight up if you want them to. So I decided to try it and ended up falling in love with it. I really, really have been enjoying this product so much. But then I was at the store the other day and I saw this e.l.f. brow lift and I thought it looked incredibly similar. It comes in the same kind of little pot. When you open them up, they look exactly the same. They're like kind of a clear gel. And I'm pretty sure that e.l.f. is purposely duping the ABH Brow Freeze. So let me show you me applying both of these. We'll start with the Anastasia one. And the formula of this one feels very um, stiff. It's like a stiff, sticky gel. And when you apply it to your brows, you can literally stick them straight up and they just kind of stay there all day. It just freezes them, like the name says. And what I do is I brush them upward first and then kind of to the side a little bit so they're not sticking straight up. But this is the only thing that keeps my brow hairs up all day instead of growing downward. So they actually stay looking good all day. And then in comparison, I think the e.l.f. one feels very similar but the gel in here is just slightly more emollient and I don't feel like it dries as stiff or as crunchy as the ABH, but it gives your brows the exact same effect. As you can see with me brushing it up, it stands my brow hairs up just as well. Your brow doesn't actually feel stiff. Like if I touch my brow, it feels soft and your brow doesn't feel as stiff or crunchy afterwards either. So I would say the e.l.f. is absolutely a great dupe. It does the exact same thing. The only downside with the e.l.f. one is I feel like it doesn't last quite as long. It does last a lot longer than the brow gels that I was using to keep my brows in place. It keeps my brow hairs up, I would say most of the day, but I don't think it's quite as bulletproof as the ABH. If you're somebody who needs your brows to look good, for 10, 12, 16 hours, whatever it is, then you might want the ABH. But I think if you just want your brows to look good for like six to eight hours maybe, I think the e.l.f., like I said, it holds my brows in place a lot better than most brow gels that I've tried. I still think that it is a great alternative, especially for the price. Next up, I have a foundation dupe and I recently tried the new Makeup Forever HD Skin. This is the reformulated version. I never tried the original, at least I think I haven't. I may have way like years and years ago, but I don't really remember it enough to compare it to the new one, but I've really been enjoying this. I love how it's like a really light, fluid kind of foundation with a weightless feel to it. It has a nice satiny finish so it doesn't dry down really matte and it's not dewy either. It's like that perfect skin-like finish. It doesn't sink into my pores and fine lines. It really just makes my skin look like skin perfected. So I've really been enjoying this, but as I've been using it, I started thinking of how much it reminds me of the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy and Smooth. It has that same kind of weightless feel on your skin, the skin-like satiny finish. It's a really light fluid foundation with just that perfect medium coverage. It's not too full, but it's not sheer either. It can be built up really easily without looking cakey on your skin. I think these two are very, very comparable. I don't have the same shade match, unfortunately. They're a little bit different. I have the Maybelline in Classic Ivory and I have the Makeup Forever in 1R12. But this is another product that I honestly cannot tell the difference between. I think they 
they come out exactly the same and they look identical, plus they have a very similar wear time as well. So it's not a big surprise that I love this because the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation is one of my top favorites that I've loved for many, many years. So I just wanted to mention this dupe in case you had your eye on the Makeup Forever HD. If you have the Maybelline Fit Me already, I feel like you probably would not need to go out and spend your money on this. Or if this one just is not in your budget, try the Maybelline. I think you'll really enjoy this. It's a beautiful foundation. And if you have more oily skin, they do have an oily skin version as well. I also recently found a dupe for the Milk Makeup Bronzing Stick. I have it in the shade Baked. So this is the lighter one. And I really enjoy this a lot. It's a beautiful cream bronzer. It's not like a sticky type of formula. So it dries down to a powder finish and the color is beautiful. It's a little bit warmer, but it just really like warms up my skin so much and just leaves a beautiful glow. And I recently found this at the drugstore. This is the LA Girl Velvet Bronzer Bronzing Stick. It is almost identical to the Milk Makeup, both in terms of the texture that it has and the color is very similar, but I actually think the color of the LA Girl one is slightly more to my preference because it's a little bit of like a reddish undertone, which is more the color that I turn in the sun. Because I have that pink undertone to my skin, it lo always looks like I'm getting a little bit burned, even though I'm just getting color. So I think this looks the most natural on me. And this also dries down to that powder finish it's not sticky it's so so easy to blend I feel like it doesn't lift your foundation underneath when you're applying it it really has a beautiful velvety finish and it's weightless as well so I thought this was a great dupe for the milk makeup stick I believe wet n wild also has bronzer sticks like this I don't have those unfortunately so I'm not quite sure how the colors line up but that's another option that you might want to check out as well if you can't find these LA girl ones I found mine at CVS and I'm pretty sure they have LA girl in some Walgreens stores as well, and also at Ulta, but I'll leave it linked down below in case you're having trouble finding it. I've just been getting a lot of requests for a good cream bronzer, and I feel like the Milk Makeup one is one of my favorites, so I was super happy to find a good dupe for it. Another product I just got recently at Sephora is from Hourglass. This is their Phantom Volumizing Glossy Balm. So this retails for $35. It is very expensive for a lip product, but I swatched it in store and it was so beautiful. I was like, I need to try this. I also love the packaging. I think it's so, so pretty. But as soon as I got it home and I was putting it on, it reminded me so much of another glossy lip product that I have from the drugstore, and that is the Revlon Super Lustrous Shine Lipstick. So it's not the same packaging. This kind of has like a slim bullet, and this one is just more of like a regular standard lipstick but the texture of these is exactly the same. I'll show you the hourglass one and you can see like just how glossy it is. It's way more glossy than like a typical tinted lip balm. Those normally have a little bit of like a dewy sheen, but this is like full on glossy like a lip gloss in stick form basically. And the Revlon is the exact same way. So the hourglass is in the shade Slip and the Revlon one that I have is in Nude Illuminator. I feel like these colors are actually pretty similar. Not exact, but pretty close. And they look exactly the same on your lips. I'll go ahead and put the Hourglass on one side and the Revlon on the other side of my lips, just so you can see how similar they really are. They have the exact same amount of glossiness and they just give the exact same effect. The only difference between them, I would say, is that the Hourglass one has a plumping effect to it. So it has a little bit of a tingle going on. It doesn't have a scent, but it almost feels minty going on. It's like a menthol sort of a feeling to it. Whereas the Revlon lipstick has a vanilla scent. It's very comfortable. It doesn't have that tingle, which I'm not usually a fan of. I didn't realize that the Hourglass one was gonna have that until I put it on. So I actually even prefer wearing the Revlon because I just feel like it's a little bit more comfortable on my lips because I don't like that tingle. And I really like the scent of it as well. Another product that this is very similar to also is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip. I feel like these three are almost identical and I think 
think somebody actually asked me in a recent video if I had a dupe for these. And there was a product from Sephora collection called the Melting Lip Clicks, and they were almost identical both in packaging and formula to the Tarte. They've since been discontinued. I have the Tarte in the shade Coconut. It's not similar in terms of the color as much, but I think you can kind of see just how the formula is. Again, it just really looks like a lip gloss in stick form, basically. And they have this really sort of melty feel going on your lips. So if you're looking for like a lip balm that has a really, really glossy, shine. I would check out these Revlon lipsticks. I have them in several colors. I can show you all three colors that I have really quickly. I'm actually wearing the shade Glossed Up Rose in the video today. So I think those are an awesome dupe for those two products at a really affordable price. Next up, I have another lip dupe and this is for the Dior Lip Glow. I have two different colors that I've gotten recently and I've been enjoying them so much. And then I remembered I had another product that is also called Lip Glow and that is from Pixie Beauty at Target. Target. So Pixie isn't the cheapest brand in the world. It's a little bit more, I would say like mid-range than drugstore, but it's a lot cheaper than Dior still. So I wanted to show these to you um, because I feel like they are almost identical once you put them on your lips. So let me show you the pink one that I have first. I have Dior in the shade Rose Gold and Pixie in the shade Fleur. So both of these are like a really soft pink. I feel like the Dior one is maybe just slightly more peachy. It also has a little bit of shimmer in the formula, but most of them don't have that. It's just this one particular color. So color wise, I don't think these two match up exactly, but it's really the formula that feels almost identical with these. They're a really thick, cushiony sort of lip balm or lip treatment that just kind of smooths out your lips. It gives a little bit of like a dewy glow, but not anything super glossy like the ones we were just talking about. It just makes your lips look really healthy and adds a little bit of color. It's not super pigmented. I think these are very sheer and just like the name suggests, it's just, it gives your lips like a little bit of a glow. So they're super, super close. And then let me show you the other color that I have. Um, I have Dior in the shade Rosewood and Pixie in in Juicy. So the Juicy shade from Pixie is a little bit more of a brighter orange while the Dior Rosewood is kind of like a peachy nude. So they're kind of in the same color family, but I think the Pixie one is just slightly brighter, but it's certainly not as bright as it looks in the tube because of the sheerness of it. And again, I'm not really matching colors here as much as a matching formula because I feel like these just have the same exact feel once they're on your lips. I honestly wish the Pixie one came in more shades. I I want to say there were only four different colors at Target when I looked, but I went to try to find another color to see if maybe I could find a color dupe for my Dior shades and I really couldn't. But still, I think if you're just looking for a lip product that's just going to be really super hydrating and feel like a lip treatment and just give you a little hint of color, I think these are beautiful. And then I just have one more blush dupe for you and that is these Revlon blushes. So they recently reformulated them. I'm not exactly sure when. They used to come in different patterns packaging and now they have this packaging where you can see the whole entire blush. It's been out for a little while, but I just was really hesitant to try these because in the past, I felt like Revlon's blushes were not pigmented. They hardly showed up. They were very like powdery and kind of chalky and just not a great formula. So I really didn't want to spend my money on them, but I had some CVS extra bucks and I saw these one day and I was like, let me give them a shot. It's free, why not? Let me just try them. And I was blown away by this formula. These are actually so pigmented. You have to be a little careful with them, but they're so silky. They blend amazingly on your cheeks and they started to remind me a lot of my NARS blushes. I honestly cannot tell the difference when I use these. NARS also makes a very pigmented blush. And I have two colors here that I really feel like compare pretty closely to these two Revlon shades that I have. So let me show you really quick. Um, the first comparison that I have is the NARS blush in the shade Dolce Vita and Revlon's Apricute. I actually saw Risa Does Makeup do this comparison on her channel and I was like, I have those two blushes, let me try this out. And she was so right. These are almost identical in terms of the color. In a swatch, they look just ever so slightly different on your cheeks, 
they look exactly the same. You can't tell the difference and the Revlon one is just as pigmented as the NARS. On my lighter skin tone, I have to go in with a slightly lighter hand, especially for this color because it's a little bit on the deeper side. But oh my gosh, these are so close and the NARS blushes are very expensive. So I was happy to see a drugstore alternative. I definitely want to get more colors of these Revlon ones because they're just beautiful. And then the other color that I have, I thought was going to be very similar to another color I have from NARS. This is Impassioned. So I'll show you those two side by side. Impassioned is like a really, really pale pink, like a baby pink. It's beautiful. Um, and then Rosy Rendezvous from Revlon is also a super soft baby pink, but I think it's more of almost like a dusty pink. So it's slightly different. It's a little bit almost mauve -y compared to impassioned from NARS. So it's close, definitely not as close as the other dupe, but I think if you're looking for a really light pale pink blush, check this one out from Revlon because this is so beautiful, especially if you again have a lighter skin tone. I've been wearing this one so much. It's just like the perfect hint of color on your cheeks, especially if you have like maybe a lot going on with your eyes or your lips and you just wanna keep your cheeks a little bit lighter and more neutral. It's the perfect shade for that. And this formula is just incredible. So I've really been enjoying it a lot. All right guys, so that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I'd love to hear your dupes down below. If you have any that you'd like me to check out or anything that you'd like me to dupe for you, let me know your requests down below and I can definitely add those to my next video. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and for hanging out and watching this video. I appreciate it so much. And if you're new here and you like dupes and drugstore makeup, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. I do a lot of those on my channel. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you all in my next video. Take care guys. Bye.